It's not a bird, it's not a plane, it's superhero slate. It's a modern podcast where we talk about everything that's great. Like movies, TV, superheroes. It's superhero slate. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Superhero Slate, the show where we run down the latest superhero entertainment news. We love TV, movies, and superheroes, so let's talk it all out. My name is Chris. And my name is Mike. And this week, we're getting into the holiday spirit with a merry little Batman trailer. We're getting into it, much like Damien gets into his little suit. Yeah, that's right. And, and so, we'll talk about it, but I just love <laughs> the age-old song, Mike, of uh, Jingle Bell's Batman Smells being used. Uh, explicitly. <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to say the the Christmas song that what was it like Little Wayne that that's in the trailer or something? Oh like yeah, that? no, no, I didn't, I didn't touch <laughs> on that at all. Uh, you got me there. Um, but did you know that Madam Web's trailer makes us think about that time when our mom was in the Amazon researching spiders? <laughs> you know what? I feel like every mom, everyone's mom, you know, yeah. takes that trip down to the Amazon at some point in time, you know, and we thank them for that. Yeah, uh, spiders need research, especially <laughs> ones in the Amazon. So we're gonna talk about Madam Web's uh, first trailer uh in, in extensive detail i feel later it's gonna be great uh we got some fantastic forecasting rumors for the last of us wink wink <laughs> hint hint no no we'll, we'll talk we, it's a pun we'll play on that we'll play with that later anyway uh but anyway we've got we've got a pretty good episode today i'm, I'm pretty excited about this news we have not talked about any of this to this week i i feel except for the madam web trailer because who the hell didn't talk about it this week and um <laughs> uh, at least make fun of it and and cringe uh, yeah, but anyway, I feel I feel we've got a pretty good week, Mike. How, how, how's your weekend been? Yeah, I was like scrolling through the notes, and I was like, "Oh, we got a this is pretty stacked. We got a lot to talk about here." Yeah. So I will not mince any words. I will not waste any time. I watched two things this weekend. Uh, one of them is actually our first bullet point in the notes, so I'll wait to bring that up. But the new Scott Pilgrim show dropped on Netflix this weekend, and I didn't really know much about it beyond like the first trailer that came out a while ago i didn't really look into it i didn't know exactly what the strategy was how how much were they adapting we all knew that the original film voice cast was coming back and this was executive produced by edgar wright but i'm pretty sure that's just kind of one of those things where they're attaching his name to it more than anything else but i wouldn't be subscribed surprised that he was you know re reading scripts you know he yeah. subscribed to it yeah i'm sure he subscribes to netflix on youtube yeah, yeah. um but he like, probably doesn't wanna, pay like, for it they probably give it to him for free <laughs> like i don't want to say much and i don't want to spoil anything but there is a fun turn that happens at the end of the first episode like the first episode is kind of uh luring you in with a sense of familiarity especially with the voices and um, I never really dove into the the comics all that much. I read the first couple volumes, but it was a while ago. And I got to them after I fell in love with the film. So my head is all all kind of a mishmash of panels from the comics, but also iconic shots from the film, which is really Edgar Wright's style, just dripping mm -hmm. all over it. So you're kind of like, well, what do you do? What do you attribute to Scott Pilgrim? What do you attribute to Edgar Wright? What do you could contribute to like uh brian lee o'malley who created scott pilgrim so it's just this weird like like mental exercise watching this first episode but a cool thing happens at the end of the first episode that kind of pivots and shows you where the where you're gonna go with the rest of the series so i'm um, two episodes in i'll probably i'll get around to watching the other six episodes i'm not in a rush to complete them but the mm -hmm. animation looks beautiful the art style is really really fun i love the thick line styles of like brian lee o'malley's art the there's a lot of action in the second episode and they 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 board and compose that really really great so i think there's a lot to look for here but it is very strange like uh i also downloaded a letter letterboxed this weekend which yeah. i'm sure a ton of people are already familiar with and I was like, I should start doing one of these things. And uh, once I got into the flow state of like reviewing these movies that they were just continually um, putting in like a carousel, yeah. like I got into this flow of like, okay, what's a four movie? What's a four and a half? What's a five? And, uh, you know, I got the Scott Pilgrim, like, oh, this is a four and a half. Like, this is a big, this is a big movie for me. So mm -hmm. it's just, it's very strange. All of these different adaptations. Uh, Netflix had this like little reel that they shared uh, the other day where it was like a triptych of uh, panels from the comic book, 
uh, shots from the film and then shots from the uh, cartoon, the animation that just came out this weekend. And it is crazy. Yeah, there's three different interpretations of yeah. the same story now. So a lot to take in. Obviously, if you're a Scott Pilgrim fan, you got to check it out. Yeah. Um, how long are the episodes? Are they 45 minutes or? Oh, what? no, no. They're they're definitely in the 30s. 30, 30, oh, okay. 30, like, range. Okay. Yeah, I, I, you just never know, right? These, mm-hmm. you know, there's no set time for episodes anymore on mm-hmm. streaming. You're like, well, can they can be, are they the, are they a 30 minute? Are they 40, 50? Could they be an hour? So that's good to know that they're, they're a little shorter. That seems more palatable. I did, I did not, I, this is not on my radar at all. Don't, I have nothing against Scott Pilgrim. I really like the movie, um, but I'm, I'm just... This might be something whenever I'm out of other things to do and want to like mm-hmm. binge watch a day. Uh, last Thanksgiving, uh, my wife reminded me we we both got really sick like Thanksgiving weekend, so we didn't go anywhere, we didn't do anything. We laid under blankets and binge watch Andor that we've been putting off for months. <laughs> um, so uh, that was really nice. So I might I might put this in my pocket for one of those uh, winter sick days yeah. that inevitably hey. comes around. Good idea. Um, but the other thing is I downloaded because I'm very excited for Mike, and I'm glad you watched it because I had no idea if you were going to watch it or not. And that is uh, Monarch Legacy of Monsters, the first thing here in our in our show notes. Yeah, uh, well, it's, it's all thanks to you, Chris, in your Plex server because I canceled my Apple Plus the other day and uh because it's like just nothing was like coming out and i wasn't really watching it i was like oh and they were raising their price too yeah. like right conveniently when this yeah. came out so I, I was just like i think i've spent like 40 bucks on this so far and haven't watched anything the last couple months and then of yeah. course i forgot that this was coming out but i was like yeah. oh this, this is, has a little flex server set it, up in monarch legacy of monsters it, it's a gamble right because you know um there the there's uh you know uh godzilla Skull Island, uh, the second Godzilla movie, which people are divided on, and then there's Godzilla vs. Kong. There's Godzilla X Kong coming out. There was that cartoon, what Skull Island, on Netflix a couple months ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, this is this is a, a gamble. It could be good. It could be bad. Are you willing to resubscribe for a couple months to watch this, or possibly watch it for free? But um, uh, but yes, Monarch Legacy Monsters on Apple TV Plus. Um, the first two episodes dropped together, so this is not a binge model. There, they're definitely dripping this out here. And um, I, I've got to say, we didn't, we didn't talk about it, but uh, I actually had a really good time with this show so far. It is not the story I thought it was going to tell. It's definitely got a, like, a very different spin with the main characters. Um, it takes place, as we've talked about before, in two different timelines, in the in the 50s and then in 2015, like kind of post-Godzilla 1 so far. And I think, I, I, I have the feeling, because they keep saying 2015, Mike, we're going to get a time skip. To like modern time um uh-huh. eventually because like you if it's set in 2015 you don't have to keep reminding us all the time i guess but maybe they're just doing it to, to play it safe but um i definitely did not expect the um family drama this is more like a drama thriller more than anything else more than i thought it would be um along the way i thought there's some action scenes uh what's the guy the guy from workaholics anders home is that his name? I believe. Is, yeah. Is one of the guys. I, he's great. I, I've only know him from workaholics. So this was great to see him. In he's that. the, he's the young John Goodman, right? Uh, well, no, well there's, um, I don't, I don't think he's John. Is that John Goodman's character? I think. He, yeah. I think he's John. Oh. So this is, this is a whole nother thing. Like, um, there is a, it, it's so funny. They construct a show around a timeline as if that there's an avid fan base out there that uh-huh. can follow any of this. Like they do some like flashbacks to like a to Godzilla destroying the bridge in San Francisco. And yep. I'm like, to its credit, the cinematography of this show is top notch to yep. the point where I was like, is this was this flashback from the movie that I barely yeah. remember? Because I just these movies are very disposable, right? They're very big, very grandiose, lots of spectacle, but there's not a lot to latch on to character wise. You're like, oh yeah, Brian Cranston's in one of them. Uh, Aaron Taylor Quick, Johnson was in yeah, it as Quick well. Silver's in one of them, but like none, of, all the the characters die or they're not, they don't carry they, over to other movies. Uh, you know, yeah, I mean, like I, the Godzilla movies, the first one you ha- like you mentioned, Brian Cranston, Aaron Taylor Johnson, but like beyond that, I know Millie Bobby Brown was in like the second one, whatever it wasn't she, uh, and her isn't de- she. Is she in the one with Mecha Godzilla? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh uh, well, the, she's in the first one, the first the uh, the the second Godzilla Legacy of Monsters or whatever it was with the three headed one, the the Hydra looking oh, dude, and then the, and then Mecha, and then she was in Godzilla v Kong. It carried over because they took that that stupid tunnel to to like uh, <laughs> Japan or whatever, and then then they have like you mentioned Kong Skull Island, which was made. Um, uh, with with uh in the past it's got a uh, uh, tom hiddleston and brie larson in it and john goodman mm-hmm. uh, returning as well Th- there's a lot like 
the, the, they're playing with timelines is really weird because the first episode technically takes place, the past version takes place after the second episode's flashbacks, right? Yeah. Uh, so, but like, they're. Of course, are... the show, it also kicks off in the 70s in yeah. Skull Island. So, it's like, you're really, you're oscillating quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, and what is cool is, yes, there's Godzilla, but like, I really enjoyed the Mutos. Like, the, we're seeing different ones, right? In this, like, mm-hmm. the, you know, they're not the big Godzilla level, but they're, they're, they're fairly large throughout this. Uh, so, like, um, I think that's really cool. I like you said, it's a top notch, it's a premium quality show to watch, right? I don't feel like they skimped on anything throughout this. So uh I'm having a good time. I actually look forward to to catching up the rest of this season as it comes out and um it's what I think is fun and, and Mike you, you tell me what, what you think, but um we have a uh, Kurt Russell and his son Wyatt Russell uh playing the uh, different era versions of the same character, which I thought was a really cool thing. Yeah, I'm tr- I'm sure I feel like at some point in time that must have happened historically in Hollywood, but I yeah. can't think of anything off the top of my head. So that is pretty fun. I feel like the the temperament, the attitudes, you know, the the visuals and the face are pretty similar. So I thought but, that was neat. They just had to tell um, uh, White Russell, like, just act like your dad does in all of his movies. <laughs> just, just act like him. And he's, he's pulling it off pretty well, uh, I think. So, yeah. For that. Uh, like I was saying, like, it, it, it feels very high budget, right? No wonder Apple increased the price of their subscription. I Like, I don't know if they're actually in Tokyo when they're doing those uh, scenes over there, but it feels like they're in Tokyo. Mm-hmm. I love yeah. when they went and did that little underground drill. I love the signage of Godzilla that's around there because it yeah. just feels very real and sterile, even though it's like this big fictitious beast that we're all very familiar with. They're mm-hmm. they're taking it real and serious. The the cab drive in with like the missiles and the guy just thinks it's all a big hoax. It was uh, all CGI thought, and he's got a podcast yeah. you can listen to. Uh, yeah. So I, I do yeah. like how they're approaching almost like this, like what if with our society of what if this actually happened? So there's a lot of, there's a lot yeah. of happening there. Um, I, I feel like some of the episodes drag a little bit and I feel like it's just uniquely the problem that this, universe has where we want to see big monsters and they have to unfortunately fill a lot of the time without big monsters so at least the family dynamics are interesting like i mean i wasn't expecting the the secret second family yeah you know, that's set up very early on and it's like it's literally like the early. first five minutes you're like hey uh this is what's this is this is your story going forward for your the the, the present day good luck with it kind of deal um, yeah and i don't know exactly how much matt fraction is involved um one of our kind of favorite comic book writers but he is an executive producer and i think he has created yeah he, he was very he was he was very instrumental in getting this off the ground um early on so yeah he i know there are photos of him after they announced it of him like building cities uh like like cardboard cities of like how he mm-hmm. that he wants to like how the monsters will move and how they need to, to to handle some of the action scenes so i think i think he was pretty involved with that stuff um, yeah i but, really but it, 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 i really yeah i like i really want to um like, I want to see more monsters, obviously too. But I really need somebody out there on YouTube to cut together like a recap, mm-hmm. uh, directly related to what's going on in this story. Right? I I, I think it's gonna take a another week another week or so for someone to digest the storylines that have been set up in these first two episodes, and yeah. then kind of create me a recap video because I'm not going back and watching these. Yeah. Like when they show uh, a John Goodman like throw that bag into the ocean at the beginning, I was mm-hmm. like, wait, how did John? When was the last time we saw John Goodman? I was like, I'm not queuing up Kong Scott Island to figure out the last time we saw John Goodman in that movie. Yeah. So I need somebody else to do the he, work. He, for me. Yeah. But, yeah. I, I mean, and I, I think for people who haven't watched it, that's a good movie to watch. You know, that I would recommend yeah. it before you jump into this. Yeah. That one's solid. But, yeah. Yeah. Overall, I was, it's always nice to see a lot of money yeah. on screen, especially when you're paying a streaming service yeah. for it. So uh, I'm not upset. I'll, I'll keep yeah. an eye out. Yeah, I'm definitely going to keep up. And I think the other thing is what is cool about this. You only need to see so far, we know this, Godzilla and Kong Skull Island because they've not touched on the legacy of monsters or whatever, King of Monsters, and then um, uh, the Godzilla versus Kong at all, right? Because it's set mm-hmm. in 2015. The other two movies haven't happened yet. So I would say you're actually pretty pretty well-versed if you just watch those two movies going into it. But I know that first Godzilla is definitely a uh, – I wouldn't say a drag, but like you don't get a lot of monster right early on. It, it, it takes a while before Godzilla gets the the thing. But I, I'm enjoying this. I didn't think, you know, after skipping the the animated Skull Island TV show, I was like, this this could be awful. This could be really really bad. But I'm glad they're 
you know they're they're taking a pretty good approach to it. And I'm excited to see uh, how it pays off. Do you know um do you know off the, your top of your head how many um episodes this are? Uh, I mean this this one feels what, like a six like or a eight. Six. Six to eight or yeah, there's no way they're pumping out like I would be surprised if there's ten of these slotted at the budget that it's going into the Yeah, uh let me see here. I'm gonna pull it up here. No, there are ten. Ten episodes. Ooh, dang. Yep. Yeah. Uh and Matt Fraction wrote the next to last episode as well, just to give oh, you a heads up. That's great. Um so they've got they got some really cool uh stuff here. Very, very excited. Uh the Chris Black, I think he's maybe the showrunner, I think. Um he is uh he's also directing the last episode but um oh yeah then they have a list here on wikipedia as depicted in godzilla as depicted in kong skull island so they got a little mm-hmm. bit going so yeah i would recommend it um you know maybe wait till all 10 are done if you if you don't want to pay for the full you know three months of apple tv plus you need to to get this but uh very very high quality show and we'll, we'll keep you posted as it wraps up in january uh, moving right along here, Mike, uh, we touched briefly on the Coyote versus Acme movie last week uh, that uh, mm-hmm. Warner Brothers was uh, shelving. It's com- completed, mostly completed, um, 99% done uh, to get a tax break. Uh, but the movie is no longer being shelved after outcry from fans uh, and uh, essentially uh, lawmakers uh, for this. So it'll be shopped around for distribution. And so we will probably... I'm thinking see this on a streaming service. I don't think they, if it's going doing they're, if they're doing this, they're not going to put it in theaters. That's what I'm thinking. Um, but uh, I, I it was very interesting. I, I I had a tweet here. It looks like my link uh, was was out. But like there are Congress members out there calling for inquiry into Warner Brothers on all of these tax breaks for shelving completed movies uh, yeah. that they've been doing. They're like saying it's like burning a house down and then you know for the insurance money kind of deal. Yeah, right? it's like I'm sure that they have. Um you know, very talented lawyers at Warner Brothers that are probably like, yeah, this is fine. We can still do this right now. But at the same time, when you run a big corporation, you don't want extra lawmaker eyes on you if you don't Mm -hmm. need them. So yeah, you could get a tax write-off for this one movie, but it seems like, oh, let's just put it out there. I, I, if, if there was like a, someone, if Zavzlov had the capability to play 4D chess, which I highly doubt that he does, he could be like, I'm going to try to cancel this movie and make everyone mad and then just drive up yeah. all press is good press. And then now I can actually sell it to somebody because that's probably what's going to yeah. happen, right? You know, if I was like Ted Sarandos over at Netflix, be like, yeah. yeah, I think I actually might buy I, this because this has broken through the news cycle. They said Netflix, Apple, um, Paramount, um, maybe Peacock. I think Prime, I think Prime is also. In yeah, the like everyone's like trying to gonna go watch this. And again, it was co-written um, by James Gunn and stars John Cena, like two huge names right now, right? Like, the, it, it's silly, but uh, you know, again, like I said, they have good lawyers. But when the people who make the laws are looking at it and like, well, maybe we don't want you to ever do this again. Like they're they're gonna, you know, yeah. play a little I, more I heard- softball. <laughs> Yeah, last week after it was uh, canceled, there was a lot of kind of insiders close to the movie that were like, we don't understand why they would do this. Like, this movie is, like, so good. It's amazing. It has, like, Mm -hmm. a nice emotional heartstrings at the end. And I took all of that with, like, a grain of salt, right? Right. Like, I'm just not going to trust a bunch of people. Like, if I worked on something for a bunch of years and then it was, like, canceled, um, you know. Yeah, you become become emotionally attached to it and it's your baby kind of thing. Yeah, and you don't speak ill of the dead, right? So I I don't think necessarily that – I mean, also, too, like, we just went through a summer where, like, Tom Cruise told us like the flash was the best movie he's ever seen. Yeah. Right. So like you just, you can't James Gunn, people. James Gunn said that Tom Cruise has watched it. So, uh, <laughs> but like the other part of this is the, fla- the, 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 the lashback from Hollywood A-listers canceling meetings with Warner brothers discovery after this, because they're like, well, we don't know if our project will ever actually be released because a lot of these people uh, sign contracts with residuals. Right. And that's why they're the cancels. Cause like, we're gonna have to pay more out in the long run. Uh, if a movie's successful or getting, you know, uh, streamed or views. So, I mean, it, Warner Brothers was one of the biggest movie studios in forever. And right now they're, I guess they, they just maybe won back Christopher Nolan after um, the Tenant stuff, right? He he did, Oppenheimer was somewhere else, I believe. Um, mm. So yeah, maybe, maybe like, Paramount? I don't quite remember. I don't, yeah, I don't know who did it, but, but either way, like, you know, he's coming back around to them after their commitment to him, but I'm like, yeah, they're just going to, make everybody else mad right kind of deal so that's i'm glad this movie's getting some i, I like coyote I, I, or warner uh warner brothers what's it called looney tunes merry melodies right those are some, some of my fondest memories growing up um 
and everybody knows, uh, you know, Wiley Coyote and the Roadrunner stories, Mike. So, um, pretty, pretty excited to, to hopefully get to see this, uh, in the next, next year. On the other side though, of uh, Warner Brothers trying to cancel things, they actually renewed Harley Quinn for another fifth season on Max. So, um, the little show that could, if you will, I think that's great. Yeah. That one's going strong. Good for them. Yeah. Uh, I know they're getting the kite man spinoff. We talked about that a little bit. I've not seen anything oh, on that. Yeah, that's um, and, um, they started, I think uh, I heard the last season ended with a, uh, birds of prey kind of homage with the, the characters kind of appearing in the show now. So, um, yeah, that's good. Good for them. I'm, I'm glad that uh, people are, are, are tuning in for this and, and that, that show animation is getting its due on the streaming service, right? Even if it's in that. And, um, we're going to keep moving, moving through here. Um, James Gunn's been out. He, he's, he's out saying things, doing things. And uh, one of the confirmations for his DC Universe this week is that uh, Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow, uh, has a writer in Anna Noguera. I think I pronounced that right. I had to look it up earlier. Uh, And she actually originally wrote a version of the script that um, spun out of The Flash with uh, Supergirl Sasha Kaye, uh, who who was in that. So uh, they were impressed with her work. They hired her again to write a new script, essentially. Not uh, not reuse her script, write a brand new one for their version of uh, Supergirl. In, in this universe. Yeah, I wonder... I mean, I would assume, if you're James Gunn, th- this is kind of a move to, like, you're a great and talented um, creator. We don't want to lose you just because this universe fell apart. Please stay on. You know Supergirl very, very well. I got to imagine there's a new actress yeah. attached attached to it. Like, they're not... Unfortunately, whether she was great in The Flash or not, that universe is dead now. Yeah. So you got to... Press on forward with Boy, you. yeah, they don't want to refer back to that. And they also hired, um, again, uh, Andy Machete, again, who directed The Flash to do, um, uh, was it Bat- it's Batman, right? The Batman um, movie. Uh, mm-hmm. So uh, James Gunn, they're at least, you know, they're not burning bridges with the people making the content uh, before they took over. Uh, and, and Andy Machete, despite The Flash being um, mostly a Batman movie uh, that, that kind of really didn't do anything at the same time. I, I think he's a great director. You know, right? He did the the It movies. He he had a vision. He really stuck to it. So um, that's cool. Um, James Gunn also describes um, Supergirl as a uh, star spanning tale, uh, and, it, and the image he shared was Supergirl on like a, an alien planet, sitting like a beach on an alien planet kind of thing in her Supergirl outfit. So I really think this is going to be like a space set movie like this she's not going to be on earth as supergirl like she's going to be the one out in the cosmos if you will yeah i mean that's not a bad way to approach it right you know you're going to have clark set on earth we're going to be kind of introducing the world of this new dc universe and earth Mm -hmm. and then you he, he can do his thing like he did with guardians right when he introduced the guardians totally detached from earth they only had like one shot at the very beginning that showed Peter yeah. getting Earth exists. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then we're out running around in space. So I think that could be fun. I'm curious to see what happens though. Like, how do we interpret space through the yeah. lens of DC? When I feel like we have a pretty solid understanding of maybe what space looks like and how it functions in the MCU. I'm yeah. I'm curious if maybe there's a unique take there. Yeah, and, and obviously with the Green Lantern stuff that we know they're working on, they're they're trying to set some foundations, right, for to pick that up too. So um, whatever they do, they're gonna have to you know hopefully do it right the first time and and kind of stick to that uh, those rules. I my 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 theory my 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 not my fear but my thoughts are it's gonna be very similar to Guardians, right? Like you know people and because James got this huge prosthetic man, uh, mm-hmm. probably just a lot of humanoid people with prosthetics on like kind of run down planets out in space, if you will. But mm-hmm. um, I, I'd be pleasantly surprised if he did something different on the way. The other thing he shared this week is uh, back to, like he said, Superman uh, legacy, Maria Gabriela de Faria, uh, who was uh, an actress in deadly class has been cast as the engineer. Angela speak, uh, speak uh, from the authority. We knew that they're also getting a movie in there and she's been noted as a villain, but I think that could just be, um, her comic book version is a villain, so if they adapt her to the authority, she may not. She be more antagonistic than a villain, if you will. Yeah, I kind of. I did a little bit of googling here. I'm just kind of looking at the yeah. character. There's some side by sides with the actor, and it does make me think when you're building like a universe, like from the ground up, right? I, I, it doesn't. I wouldn't be surprised if James Gunn or Peter Safran are nerdy enough to be like 
uh, the engineer like super fans, right? Mm -hmm. But I do wonder sometimes where it's just like, oh, I want like a character to do this in my movie. I'm going to go look through the DC like kind of archives and just find a character that either looks cool or I can reinvent and I'll slot them into that role. Because uh, that's kind of what it feels like, right? Like yeah. you just, and I don't think it's necessarily bad, right? I would, I would think the same thing kind of happened in Guardians of the Galaxy as well. Like I just need like a character, any character. Well, this one's fun, and since there nobody's really precious to them, and they can be molded into whatever I want, you know, yeah. let's do it. Yeah, and and I would say you know knowing that uh, you know it, I guess uh, to be like a, a devil's advocate, it kind of against you, like knowing that they have the authority i feel like they have a better idea of this you know kind of what they're doing rather than picking someone random right because they want to use the authority and she's uh, was introduced in the authority comic books so um they, they may be pulling maybe a different like you know the guardians like the guardians we met in the movies was not the guardians from the comic books right they, that came mm -hmm. they, they they made those match later so like maybe they're like okay well this is the characters we need for the authority um and there's been probably dozens of characters uh pick pick the ones you need to make your story work kind of deal. Um, but, you know, she is a, a essentially a character with um, nanites in her blood um, and making herself look metal uh, and can, like, kind of create anything out of those metal objects, if you will. Um, mm -hmm. I would say a little bit kind of like a um, bloodshot meets um, a blue beetle, maybe, if you will, uh, along yeah, the I way. So um, this is fine. I, I think this is great. You know, it, it news is information. They said they're still shooting for July 2025 for the Superman legacy. So it sounds like we're going to be on track to get James Gunn's Peter Safran's universe here in uh, two years, Mike. Well, less than two years. So we'll do that. The last DC bit of news we have starts off uh, our trailer park of the episode where we have several trailers to look at. And this Merry Little Batman. We've discussed this several times before. Uh, very... Um, stylized animated version of, uh, uh, of a Batman story where Batman and his son Damian Wayne um, exist and it's a Christmas story. Uh, Batman, uh, his dad has gone out for something and can't get home in time for Christmas so it's up to Damian to stop the villains. The first thing I thought of this, Mike, and I, and I don't know if you're familiar, have you ever seen Bat Metal, the videos, the animated videos? No. I so, so these guys, uh, this, this group of people took death clock songs, right. From metalocalypse and animated Batman to them, a couple of them. <laughs> uh, and if you look up bat metal, like the animation style of bat metal, like the, the, like the, 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 like the, I would say it's kind of written stimpy, but like with like, uh, like, I don't know. I don't know how to explain their, their frames of the people. Like they're mm -hmm. very heavy in the chest and very tight, you know, tiny in the legs, but like, there's like some weird, you know, ugliness to like Alfred a little bit. Like, like <laughs> they didn't make him look pretty. I, I don't know, but it very feels, feels like that. But, um, the thing that takes me out of this the most is how the voices don't line up with what I had envisioned for Batman's <laughs> Damien or the villains at all. And this is not a complaint. It's just, boy, was that like a hard shake whenever i started watching this i don't know about you yeah i love how they just went nuts with it it's funny how uh batman gets the benefit of the doubt but aquaman never does this yeah. is almost exactly in line with the strategy of what they did with that uh aquaman series of shorts or maybe it was a singular short um like w like one or two years ago i think but that one was kind of coming off the I don't want to say controversy because it's such a minority of people who care about this stuff, but right. the, the, the wacky like Thundercats like reading, yeah. right? So there was a very small amount of like uh, uh, adult nerds that should have just uh, looked past this of like, oh, I can't believe they're doing this to Aquaman. Like this is the exact same thing they're doing to Batman, right? But like nobody cares because it's Batman or maybe all of those yeah. people just fell down a well. and We don't have to hear from them again. Uh, but I watched this and Chris heard me firsthand on the microphone it's catching a, up before we started recording, watching it. I, I, I earnestly yeah. chuckled a couple times, didn't I? Yeah, there, there are, yeah, there, and I, I agree. There are a couple of good laughs in this. This is really funny. Um, very, um, wholesome content, if you will, for Batman. Mm -hmm. Um, you, as I mentioned, they do the, you know, jingle bells, Batman smells, Robin laid an egg kind of thing. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the funny part to me is Batman, uh, wearing a beard and like that's like a sticking point through this trailer it's like you have the yeah. bat razor he's like i think i'm gonna keep it i'm like okay that's fine i guess like you didn't have to explain it um but um and then alfred looking like he's literally pulled out of a written stimpy like yeah short kind of thing. There, there was like a quick shot i 
think of Poison Ivy too, where yeah. she almost looks elderly. Yeah. So I don't know if that's like intentional. Like all of the villains in Batman are older now since he has a son, or it could be almost like if you think about it, maybe a little bit more indirectly, like to Damian Wayne, a little yeah. kid trying to fit in his bat suit. Everyone looks like old to him. So either way, this looks fun. The art style looks very dynamic. It, it, this was a is this like a singular thing yeah. like a like a movie it's not like a like a mini series or short yeah, it, or it, it is a uh, yeah it's a one time um movie and it is uh will be on prime not max this is one of the movies they oh. they passed on for distribution on I max just, and went to prime i just assumed it was uh <laughs> it was uh max but right. no this looks fun i'm 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 going to watch this if i can remember <laughs> yeah yeah it, and it comes out december 8th this is going to be something i'm going to download i i assume this can't be what ni- less than 90 minutes by a long shot oh uh, i i would be shocked if it's over an hour this kind yeah. of looks like a 45 minute yeah like a little little one-off kind of deal mm-hmm. um but but it is funny damien gets to get his own bat suit um i was trying to pull up it's on i pull up on their uh Amazon page, but it doesn't tell me anything else. It just gives me the assets. <laughs> I'm like, I don't need to see the assets of this. But yeah, it'll it looks be fun. This will be something you know, put in the the old Christmas watch kind of thing. So um, yeah, check check out that trailer there. All right, so let's dive into the the topic of the week, Mike. The thing I sent you. So so Madam Web. We're gonna talk about Madam Web. Uh, we we this they're threatening us with this movie still, and this <laughs> and it's actually for real this time. Uh, I sent you a leaked logo and like description of the trailer the day before oh this came God. out. Can we just we can just start with the logo? What yeah. an awful logo! Like as somebody who is, and I'll go ahead. Uh, I, hold on, well, I got to well, pull. Uh, uh, Madam Web. Let me. Logo. I got. I got to pull it. Let, let me just <laughs> add some context. It's the lowest effort logo. Um, because I'm not gonna say it's bad because I feel like I would see this on a comic book. Like literally, they they tore it off a comic, book, but it's the lowest effort. Like, you know, I don't want to bash the person who did it, but obviously it was corporate demanded. You need to make the logo look like this. And they oh, were just any, like, yeah, absolutely. Anytime you ever see anything come out of a film studio, yeah. never assume the individual artist yeah. making it had any control over it. And uh, coming coming from a professional design background, I hate this logo. They just like, we got to make it the most spider man thing possible. And we can't put a Spider-Man in uh-huh. it anywhere. And all of the letters are just like overlapping, but then weirdly enough, on this second A, they're chopping off like the left hand leg oh, of it, which doesn't so, make any sense. Some of it's three dimensional, <laughs> some of it's not three dimensional letters, right? The ones in the middle, yeah. and, and and like, do you see the Statue of Liberty? Oh yeah, I mean they don't want you to miss that, and yeah. then they put the. You gotta know this is in New York, right? Even though yeah. half of the trailer seems to be either at a diner or in the woods. Yeah, uh, and then they they put webs all over it, but like they at least mm. have the webs like overcast the letters, like make it more of a composition and less of a, uh, it, anyway, this is bad. We're focusing, but this is bad. This is, this was start. start yeah. Already. This was, this is number one. And this is even the worst thing about this. We'll talk about what I think is the worst thing here in a little bit. We'll probably agree a little bit because it also uh, includes spider webs. Um, but, um, so Madam web, the trailer has dropped and you know, um, listening to the show, friend of ours, Patrick, he sent me, um, he actually sent it to me. He he had, he said he had a slow day at work, and I was he was like, "I'm gonna I'm gonna get to it before you do." I'm like, "You do that because I'm not gonna like run to to watch this kind of trailer." You, um, you sent it to me, and I knew you were gonna wake up to it. I was like, "It He's was gonna wake welcoming up to, to me," and uh, we were. I don't remember on that specific day of the week, we had to wake up like extra early to get somewhere. I don't remember what the deal was. So it was like the sun hadn't even risen yet. Yeah. And like, we were just like trying to get ourselves together. And I'm like, if I don't watch this tw- trailer right now, I'm probably not going to get to it until yeah. like the end of the day. So like, I'm in bed, like half awake with my, my, ho- my phone horizontally, like right in my face. Oh, I'm yeah. like, what am I doing? Yeah. So he sent me the first, the first, you know, one of the reactions is to this. Um, that because I want to talk about the plot, but like people are like going to be honest, the plot itself sounds pretty interesting. Time travel, Groundhog's Day, in a superhero movie, but the acting and script are horrendous. And I'm like, actually, that's a great way to describe this. It's got a great idea to it, right? Like you know, mm-hmm. a supervillain who is trying to kill his adversaries, but because he has, he has time travel to kill superhero adversaries before they become superheroes, fun idea. But everything, everything about this from start to finish looks awful. And I, I. I can't even put my finger on it um, exactly what's kind of going on here. Uh, there are uh, literally. We've got a lot. 
I can't, what do we even start with this, man? I don't even know. A lot to digest. A lot to digest. So uh, I think the the biggest the biggest takeaway I have from this trailer is um, is the villain and his yes, suit. There it is. Right? That's that is the worst part in this entire thing to me. Um, his name is Ezekiel Sims, and he's playing a villain. But like when they show what he's wearing, it's essentially like a cosplay Spider Man outfit. Yeah, it makes me wonder his origin or something must be really, really built into um, Peter Parker or Spider-Man in some way. And there's got to be some sort of explanation of why the suit looks like the way it does, right? It, at least at the end of the the Flash movie that came out this year, when you kind of get to see the, the evil version of the Flash that's all like, you know, he's got a bunch of stuff stuck in him. He's all like gruesome and grotesque right at least yeah. we kind of get to see an origin of that of like i actually thought that was kind of cool how he ended up looking that way because he just kept failing and failing and failing right and kept getting yeah all these things impaled in him but this is just like what did he just like oh i really don't like spider-man this... so i'm gonna go home and make this suit that looks like spider-man if you look him up he doesn't have a suit in the comic books like that's the weird part about this they have given him a suit for no reason um, yeah, it, because just, he looks like the guy in the train, right? A, a business suit, uh, mm -hmm. no shoes on, uh, kind of, you know, very kind of like brooding, but like he does have some Spider-Man powers, but it looks like he has Spider-Man, like, like he has Madam Web's, I can see the future powers and he's going to be stopped by these three very specific spider women, uh, mm -hmm. that they have in here who we've seen. Um, I, I thought I put their names in here, but we have literally, um, uh, Sp two spider womans and then one Anya Corazon who is a, a different spider woman, if you will. So um, what was cool about that, we kind of saw their, 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 their costume accurate outfits in that um, Zack Snyder army of the dead blur effect, right? <laughs> like a daydream <laughs> yeah. effect. So um, Sydney Sweeney as a spider woman proper in a black suit. I don't know the names of the other two ladies, uh, but one has the arms, like the, the mechanical arms coming mm -hmm. out of her back. I thought that was a really cool look. Couldn't quite get the third one nailed down on, on what her yeah. outfit was. But it, it, it makes you wonder, is it a bait and switch? Because I, I would not put this past Sony to be yeah. like, these are just like potential futures or maybe even flashbacks that we don't really get to fully see. Or is this the big third act culmination where kind of they all come together to fight Ezekiel in some way? I, I would say it's compelling to finally see a version of these characters in suits in live action, mm -hmm. right? I feel like Marvel is still yep. quite a few years away from doing something like this. So even though uh, Sony often sacrifices story to speed run everything else, oh, it yeah. is visually cool to see. I will give it that. And then also, I've said this before on the podcast many, many times, with this Sony universe, I just have no dog in the fight. I have no stocks yeah. purchased in the performance of these movies. As of where I'm watching an MCU movie, there's always a part of me that's just like, come on, please be good. Let's write the ship. Let's get this going again. I have too much of my life built into this yeah. universe. I do this podcast every week. Please give me something good. But at least with this one, it almost kind of just feels like a sandbox or like you know, a dev environment, right? Yeah. When you're like making a website or an app, like just right. throw whatever you can at it. I don't care. No we, one cares. We're not publishing it, this. It's, well, it's, it's like a I video do. game company wants to make a licensed game, but they can't get the license. So they just have to use what they have, right? Like, like we yeah. want to make a Spider-Man movie. Who do we have? Not Spider-Man. Okay, shit. What are we going to do? <laughs> um, who do we have? Uh, we have a, three different spider, or two spider women and a spider girl. Let's do it. Uh, how can we bring them together? A lady named Madam Webb. Uh, so I, I think D Dakota Johnson, um, she's, again, a paramedic who has clairvoyant abilities. We saw, um, what's his name from Parks and Rec? Uh, and um, Adam Scott. Adam Scott ben briefly Parker. in the trailer. Um, he, th They say he's Ben Parker. I'm sure he is, but we saw him briefly in the trailer. I don't think that's going to be a huge sticking point from what I can tell. But it looks like she can... Cinder Web can view moments in time or maybe she can travel back to herself. It seems very similar to Loki, right? The last season of Loki uh, a little bit, if I'm going to be honest. I am kind of curious, you know, if, you know, because there is talks and murmurs of Andrew Garfield returning as Spider-Man in the yeah. Sony verse in some given way. And if, if we are potentially connecting it to this Madam Web movie in some way, 
would this be the version of uh, Ben Parker that raises Spider-Man's dad that becomes like a scientist, right? That works mm-hmm. for Oscorp, I think. That's what it was. It's been a long time since well, I've seen Well, he wouldn't those. raise Ben Parker. He'd be his brother. Because that's Uncle Ben. Oh, yeah, ben. Uncle. Oh, yeah, so... Oh, that, that changes things. Because that means we could meet Peter's father, theoretically, if they, in the if, Madam yeah, Web. Th- don't movie. give him any in credits ideas, Mike. Stop <laughs> stop giving him ideas. Um, but uh, th- this... People, if you, we we can we can just sit here and describe it all day long. It sounds cool when you th- sit and think about it or say some of this about it. But the dialogue, specifically the line that everyone has roasted entirely <laughs> too much this week, is I remember him. He was studying spider. I remember him when my mom was killed studying spiders. Oh, Chris, Chris, Chris! I have yeah, the exact. Thank you. Quote. Please do because I, went I back don't. To the trailer. I turned on closed captioning. I wrote it down yeah, letter you. by letter, line by line. He was in the Amazon with my mom when she was researching spiders right before she died. Oh my goodness! All one run, all run sentence with um, no emotion. And and I yeah. think Dakota Johnson's a great actress. I don't think it's on her, but like, woof! Remember the people who wrote Morbius wrote this movie. Like we are not <laughs> also, in for anything great. Yeah incredibly cringy line and line read uh, so much exposition so much to dump in that one line but i don't think it's actually in the film mm-hmm. this really feels like something like we're trying to cut a trailer and get a point across <laughs> can we bring somebody into the Does. booth to add this yeah so i i don't think this is going to be sticking around especially after what it's, everyone's been saying about it. if it's morbid time can get a life of its own mike <laughs> i i you know don't 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 tempt them to put this in there because they, they will. They'll, they'll, Sony will get the wrong idea. Like, oh, my God, this is everywhere. We should totally go put that in the movie um, when it's done. But uh, this movie is coming out February 16th, Mike. We don't have to wait very long to, <laughs> to sit this. Less than uh, like two and a half months to go watch this. So they are really um, probably setting the bar pretty low for this. Probably, probably based on star power for the actresses alone, right? Again, Dakota Johnson, mm-hmm. um, Sydney Sweeney. I still need to go find those other people. Um, I did pull up their comic book names here. Um, uh, I think actually uh, is it one of them is the voice actress in Wish, uh, the the lady who plays Maddie Franklin, Spider Woman with the arms. I believe is uh, uh oh, was that. All right. um, so like they're great, the they're, they're great actors, right? We talked about this all the time. And Sony, damn them for giving us hope with these Miles movies. Like every time we're like, oh god, they. They're going to do something awful. They give us into the Spider-Verse. And we're like, shit. Well, we, you say you're not bought in. I'm like, I'm 5% bought in because of those movies. <laughs> like, I've got a little little run in the game. But um, this is coming out in February. And then we also, they're still also threatening us with Craven next year as well, Mike. And Venom. Sometimes. Oh, boy. So, are, are they? Are they? <laughs> yeah. Is, is, is this... Uh, I don't, this isn't the nail in the Sony coffin, but boy, they're gonna keep trying. This is not. This is not giving me any hope for fucking the Zelda movie. Like I hate to to use such hard language, but like literally, Aviarid is the producer on the Legend of Zelda movie, Mike, with Nintendo, and he's doing this stuff to us. So <laughs> anyway, all right, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll move on. Next trailer. Back to the holiday spirit, Mike. Back in the holiday spirit here. What if season two? trailer has released uh even with a little bit of a teasing that happy hogan saves christmas episode going on here with the the uh the christmas hats and the 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 the, the yeah. bells throughout the theme song kind of deal yeah if you don't remember historically chris and i not incredibly jazzed about what if i don't think either of us view it as required viewing yeah. Um, we don't go out of our way to watch it. We don't hate that it exists, um, it, but it was nice yeah. to have a trailer for season two. I feel like it got me a little bit more excited when I was much more pessimistic before. Yeah. Uh, Jeffrey Wright as the watcher narrating mm-hmm. it is as just as cool as he was before. Kind of, he literally says he doesn't do like sequels, but yeah. there's, he says there's more interesting that, that, things happening here. Yeah, it sounds like there's something at the end of this that will tie into maybe uh, Secret Wars or King Dynasty, right? Because it shows like the multiverse kind of fracturing there at the end. Uh, yeah, in, that in would his be world. fun. In my opinion, that's the unique selling proposition of What If, is that it culminates to something at the end. If the first season of What If didn't all come together for that really cool, like, infinity gauntlet vision fight, yeah. Yeah, it, it wouldn't really have had much of a mm-hmm. lasting impact if it did at all. So um, and- the release schedule 
It seems like it's yeah. the most exciting thing, honestly. Yeah, so this is dropping daily starting December 22nd. Uh, so we're going to have a new What If Season 2 episode. And I, I think to me, what I, my biggest complaints about Season 1 was it was like, what if this person became this Avenger instead, right? Like, mm-hmm. um, they were all just like, oh, well, this person did this. This seems to be more of like just brand new stories from the ground mm-hmm. up. Um, there's a shot here. I actually accidentally pulled it up at like 41 seconds where it has the people from like the, who were like in the nineties. Like we have like Peggy Carter. Um, mm-hmm. It was the, the, the captain Marvel who, who was in, in uh, captain Marvel who gave Carol her powers. Hank Pym as Ant-Man, Bill Foster as Giant Man, uh, Tony Stark's dad, and then T'Chaka. And I'm like, oh, this is this is interesting. You never had those guys before. Um, so I think this is, looks interest, uh, you know, really really cool uh, to touch on that stuff. But like, it's daily, right? We're gonna get stuff daily through the end of the year to to get this out by the end of the year. So um, sooner than expected, but that's fine. I think you know we talked about this. I would rather wait nine days to watch this than nine weeks to watch it. Because yes. I just wouldn't care enough after nine weeks mm-hmm. of that. Um, any anything anything else that that caught your eye here? I'm 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 pretty excited to kind of watch. It. I'm I'm excited for Happy Hogan Saves Christmas. That looks like a fun little uh, un, <laughs> yeah, um, that, non-consequential well, jaunt. Yeah, that could be fun. We'll we'll see how it. Can. Yeah. Um, and this animation style. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, Mike. Does this look like the, Disney's new animation style overall? Like it kind of like the way it looks reminds me of like that movie that came out Wish right or is coming out wish like the Mm. does it have that same vibe or do you think that it's it's i think it just i think it feels like this is just the style that they're going to stick to for marvel animation i i don't perceive any uh blend over myself but well i'll have to wait okay all right we'll do that but yeah anyway check out the trailer and we'll we'll we'll, uh probably report back uh after the new year comes through uh to to talk about it all right Let's jump into this. We got some Marvel stuff for the rest of this. Uh, a lot of theory, a lot of rumors. So let's let's jump into to some of these juicy ones. The first one is this. This means a lot to me. Uh, Robert Kirkman, creator of The Walking Dead and Invincible, has accidentally confirmed Stephen <laughs> Young is playing the Sentry in the movie. Uh, I love this for you, Chris. <laughs> yes, uh, his costume has also been described as yellow and blue from Robert Kirkman, and I'm like That's... because he was like Stephen, you always play yellow and blue suits, and uh, Robert's like, well, what's Marvel gonna do? Fire me? They can't because I'm not hired by them so yeah this was this was a really confusing headline earlier in the week because i was like wait but robert robert kirkman's not doing anything yeah with marvel how could he confirm it i was very very confused i didn't understand what was happening uh but then oh it's all coming together now so yeah yeah he's yeah. good friends with steven young who uh voices uh well i guess the character invincible and invincible so um there's that yeah. there, i also i also saw another article real fast um hold your thought uh that the about the void in this movie is actually like um mm-hmm. a, a place the thunderbolts have to go to where that instead of like a character it's like a dimension that robert creates is the void that's like his evil energy rather than a person i'm like mm-hmm. well we'll see i don't know yeah. it's still early but I don't, I don't yeah i don't hate that idea overall necessarily um, though every time a new dimension or location is created yeah. in Marvel, it's just another one added to the list that is yeah. not uh, properly this, this categorized seems, described, yeah. in my opinion. But um, I'm curious of the physicality of uh, Steven Yeun. Obviously, his acting abilities are through the roof. Uh, this guy is amazing. So I think he's definitely yeah. has what it takes to bring a lot of dimension to the character. But I only bring up the physicality of it because Chris, you tell me all the time that the Sentry is one of the most powerful was, beings in the Marvel he, Cinematic he, Universe. He, he was based on Superman, essentially, right? So like he's got the build and stature, and you know, looks of a uh, muscularity of a Superman, right? Yeah, uh, so. but but you but is there like a transformation? transformational so, quality of the character so, in a way? is there kind of like a shazam moment you know there there's multi, it depends on which book you read so when you see him normally he's in his um you know buff state but that's the century but really his human psyche is robert reynolds who is a smaller skinnier person so yes there are moments where he has transformative properties um and in the first book uh of the, the century volume he's in that state for most of the book because the world has forgotten who the century was because if they don't know who the century is then they don't know who the void is right they're one in the same like that's his 
his, his I guess, uh, his split personality. The Void is the evil side of him. So if they don't know one, they don't know the other. So yeah, there are some Transformer properties, but I could also see them just going straight as like the Dark Avengers run where he was always in that um, powered up state, if you will. Mm-hmm. Like like a Super Saiyan, <laughs> uh, for, for those who understand that. So yeah, they can be both. There's going to be a lot of interpretations. They've done all of this before uh, in different books with him. I mean, I'm not saying that he can't bulk up. We've seen yeah. people go nuts when they're yeah. in Marvel it, territory and bulk up. He's got extra uh, time. They keep delaying these movies, so he's got extra time to work out and get there. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't know. I'm excited for you, Chris. I'm Hopefully exci- this goes better than the Inhumans. <laughs> yeah. I, God. Well, I, I hope so, too. I'm just excited about all the all the merch, all the Sentry merch I'm going to be able to buy. Uh, after, oh, yeah. Finally. Because, boy, you cannot find any of that anywhere. You, you show me where Sentry merch is, Mike, and I'll, I might buy it, but I'm not seeing any lately. But, yeah. But jumping into one of the other hot topics this week, uh, Fantastic Four. Everybody wants to know what Marvel is doing with the Fantastic Four. Um, and uh, the uh, newest rumor, the newest hottest line is, the most thing people are believing is Pedro Pascal is heavily rumored to have signed on for Reed Richards in this Ooh, movie. That's a big role. I would assume uh, uh, pay is not the issue, right? I, yeah. The rumor months and months ago was actors were turning down the role because they weren't getting the paycheck that they were looking for. Mm-hmm. There's no way you low about low ball Pedro Pascal. I mean, no. I, I would assume that he is, he is topping the charts right now with, um, with oh, his offers ass. and stuff like, like yeah, yeah. Like I, I gotta assume he started, he's going to be eclipsing like the rock soon. I mean, I personally, mm-hmm. I think he has like already, but you know, I don't know what it looks like down on paper, right? I, the Rock probably owns like I don't know, like eight hundred like fast food restaurants somewhere because that's how these super rich people make their money, right? I don't know if Pedro yeah. Pascal is quite to that he, level. He um, yeah. rumored six hundred thousand per episode for Last of Us. So, um, yeah, and and this and and yeah. Reed Richards, this is. I mean, all the Fantastic Four, this is going to be, these are going to be big contracts that last at least like a decade, right? That are going to be spanning many, many movies. Yeah. So I, I don't hate it. I don't hate this. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of people, um, there, there's a split online community. They're like, you know, he, he's, there's nothing against him. Um, he's just in everything. People don't know if they could see him as a Reed Richards, right? After you know, we, we have him in, uh, obviously he was Game of Thrones, the Mandalorian, the last of us can he pull off a reed richards actors are actors i believe they can do anything they put their minds to if they're a good actor so uh he could probably do it but can you pull the actor out of that role um it did bring up a lot i think i think it respawned the john krasinski as uh, reed richards conversations again um but you know you can't make an actor take a role he doesn't want either so um it's very interesting i i can go either way i i I just want a good story i i believe they're they always Marvel always casts good actors, Mike. I don't have any concerns with that. Um, their their actors are always on par. Their costumes are always on par. I just want a good story, and I, th- I think that's going to be my concern with this movie going forward. No matter who they they get in there, and that brings me to the second thing. It sounds like the story is going to have at least some mentioning or appearance of Galactus because Javier Bardem is now being eyed for Galactus next to Antonio Banderas. So uh, sounds like they're maybe staying in a. Um, like a Hispanic actor role kind of here um, for I this. I mean, Bar- Bardem has a presence, right? And I feel yeah. like if you're going to be doing Galactus, Galactus needs a presence mm-hmm. on screen. And Yeah. Yeah, I'm I don't curious. have any problem with either one of those if I'm going to be completely honest either. Yeah, and like I always say, I'm always curious what scale they're Galactus. Yeah. Is gigantic. Can he literally eat the earth? Yeah. You know, like what what's yeah. going on here? But if they put Celestials and then the Eternals, Mike, I, th- I think they could do it and not, mm-hmm. you know, be be left. Man, what about, we're going to see a Celestial Galactus punch out. Wouldn't that be fun? Like in space? Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah. I, I just, I still, I like, I feel like maybe Galactus, judge, jury, executioner can be the type of guy that's just like, earth, you're being, you've been getting up to way too much nonsense. I think I'm going to do the universe a favor by eating you. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, you know, yeah. prune you, if you will. Well, I, I think there's also, and I mean, not to, to come back to the Eternals, there's a celestial body in there. Maybe Gal- I think Galactus was always known sometimes in the comic books for eating planets that had celestials in them mm-hmm. um, because they would provide more power, nutrients, whatever. I don't know, whatever cosmic beings need. So if the, he knows there's one coming out of Earth, it could be on his radar as well. Um, even though it's dead. So we'll see. 
Um, the other big thing is here, they're looking to, I would say, gender swap Silver Surfer as an actress. Um, I think, you know, that, as long as the stories make sense, Silver Surfer is an alien. It can really be anybody they want to. It's not really like a, you're paying attention to the face. They are silver the whole time, right? I mean, Silver Surfer, I mean, a very blank slate of a character. Yeah. I, I don't think there's much of a humanistic origin to the character, right? Correct. Basically just... Well, yeah. Uh, like a, an ethereal being more than like something that used to have a family, the, right? Yeah. Well, the, the original person very much a, a uh, looks like a Mr. Clean, like a very, like you mentioned, mm-hmm. a blank slate male. So yes, absolutely. Um, before he got the cosmic power and created was the silver surfer. But like, if they're going to be doing the silver surfer, they can still, you know, it's going to be CG for most of it. Right. They're not going to paint mm-hmm. someone silver. So absolutely. They can do whatever they want. As long as they get a good, good uh, person in that role and the story supports it. I don't care what gender the silver surfer is they're an alien with the surfboard <laughs> doesn't make sense either way at the end of the day uh, lastly a uh, dr doom obviously a fantastic four staple they're throwing everything in this movie mike uh front runners include mads mickelson who we might remember from dr strange jason Cl- jason Villain clark actor. yep jason clark uh i know him from terminator maybe genesis and then i think he was also in a uh, the second Planet of the Apes movie. Yeah, uh, recently. He's, he's kind of got that intense square face that I think could look cool under a helmet. Yep. And then uh, obviously uh, actor Ray Fiennes as uh, Voldemort himself coming into this. Oh, I mean, all all good, all good direction. Yeah, I think I think they all have their own unique standout things. But like again, you mentioned that presence, the 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 voice, the intense stare. I think they all three have that. Mm. Um, and if he's under a mask or has a disfigured face, Mads Mikkelsen could easily come back and play that role. Very simply. I, yeah. I feel like out of everything that's kind of out there in the runway for Marvel, I think Dr. Doom is the single most exciting thing to me. Right. Cause uh, I love the villain. Cause the villain is obviously fantastic for an origin, but Dr. Doom gets around in every like Marvel story arc. That's like out there in the uh-huh. comic books. He's always like masterminding. You know, he's kind of like an evil Tony Stark, if you will. Yeah, you know, but very intelligent. You know, has the has the capability to do whatever he wants. Well, he's 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 tech and magic based, and mm. also like a so he's like he's like the best of everything. You're like, yeah, he he runs a kingdom. He's got Doctor Doom bots, and then he also practices magic. I'm like, what can't this guy do, right? So, um, yeah, I I think I think that would be he'd be fantastic in, in any role and then set him up as a. Is a long-term thing, not a one-off thing. So, absolutely agreed. But that's our Fantastic Four news. Uh, people are, are, you know, think that the the casting will be announced soon, sooner than later. I believe Matt Shackman is directing this, um, right? He was the one division person, and he also has, uh, is, I think, an EP on uh, Monarch as well. I think I saw his name pop up on Monarch uh, mm-hmm. as well. So, um, so I'm very, very excited for, yeah, he is a monarch. So I'm very excited to see kind of, uh, what they, what they kind of, kind of do with this and, and what we get. Mm-hmm. Uh, but speaking of Marvel studios, a couple of things that popped up this week, uh, they withdrew trademarks for a few, uh, properties, Mike, including, uh, Avengers timeless saga, Avengers eternity saga, nomad and runaways new era things that we'd, uh, speculate were probably in the works at some point uh, years ago. Yeah. There, there must be some sort of like a uh, rule where it's like, if you don't use it, you, you lose it in mm-hmm. some way, because you, we all know that whatever it costs to hold those trademarks, it can't it be a drop in the bucket for a big company yeah. uh, like Marvel. So they well, must be really confident. They're really not going to use these. Well, I would say this were explicitly given uh, withdrawals as well. So I don't know what that means um, in, in terms of like your, your theory there. Like obviously it's not it's not a money thing, right? Holding the trademarks not huge. The company Disney all they do is hold trademarks pretty much. Uh, that's most of their stuff. But like um, they they were expressly abandoned by Marvel, so I don't know I don't know if someone got mad and said just get rid of them or something in a meeting. Like we don't want them. Well, get rid of them. We don't we don't want it. Maybe this is, maybe this is the psychological component of uh, kind of trimming the fat and doing less and making better movies like yeah. uh by throwing out the nomad trademark trademark it's like we're not doing that disney plus yeah. steve rogers returns the infinity stones mm. uh, show 
that's just going to bog down everything else. We're trying to move forward. So yeah. toss it. I don't want anyone. We've renamed anyone it. Get rid of the old names. Uh, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, but they did keep Avengers Eternity War as a, as a title. Um, mm-hmm. So that's going to tie into our next topic here about these. Uh, so there's, there's been rumors. Um, nothing has been confirmed. So let's just go and get that out of the way. That uh, Daniel Destin Cretton has amicably left uh, Avengers Kang Dynasty as a director. And mm-hmm. the reports are that he's going to focus on the Shang-Chi sequel and the Wonder Man series. Like, he's not leaving Marvel. He's just, like, the the this is probably due to potential, like, more delays for the Avengers movies and scheduling changes because the quality over quantity, right, that you just mentioned. Yeah, um, that's probably for the best. Of- yeah, and so, like, he can't be doing that. Like, he, he, no no director wants to be tied up in a theoretical movie forever. Um, mm-hmm. So, like, yeah, yeah, you want your name on an Avengers movie, but at the same time, I'm sure he's getting offers like nobody else's to make other movies or wants to do other things. So um, can't, can't fault him for that. But Marvel is looking for a single director for both the King Dynasty and Secret Wars films in this um, transition as well, which is kind of what we got out of the other Avengers movies, right? Um, in Game Infinity War, and that comes with a possible title change, but the same direction. So, if they're going to commit to the Kang storyline, but maybe recast him or distance himself away from the name Kang and Jonathan Majors, do they just call it Eternity War and Secret Wars? Hmm. I feel like there's that's one too many war. Yep. movies in the title I agree. for Avengers because yep. we got Infinity War, then it goes Endgame, and then so yep. you know maybe keep it like well, it's obviously get something kind of clear, like, yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, that could be a possibility. Um, you know, kind of take Hang out of the name of it, and then we don't have to focus so much on the character, which has been kind of rumored the last couple weeks to see where the Jonathan Major yep. stuff uh, falls. Yeah, and with that, like you said, the studio is still committed to the Kang storyline, but the character may be recast as a mandate from Bob Iger, depending on how um, this trial goes, or if the damage has already been done, right, to to the the um, the name, the 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 uh, reputation, I guess, of mm-hmm. Jonathan Majors. But um, you know, thinking about this, I think. Um, I, I don't want the Russo. I'm going to go. I don't want the Russo brothers back. They've not done anything good since the other two movies. I, I want to give them a warm up before they come back to this. But do you get a single director? Do you try to get like a duo of directors, like people I, who can I, knock this in and out? Honestly, I think I think quantity is not a bad a bad direction here. A du- a duo to handle two. Not only like one Avengers movie is already yeah. like a gigantic task, right? So I feel like do a duo and uh, maybe. I don't know. I just feel like the dynamics between two creatives that are, you know, professionally known to work together. Right. Don't just uh-huh. go grab two random directors and try to put them in a room together. Right. But yeah. Um, well, the, I mean, the, uh, the people who did everything everywhere all at once, what are their names? The, the Daniels, the Daniels, like them, right? Like they understand time travel. They, they work together. I'm not saying it's them, but I, that would be my number one pick. If I was yeah. like given a lineup, I'd be like those guys right there. Yeah. I mean, this isn't the right answer, but the only other duo I can think of off the top of my head would be like the Duffer brothers. Like yeah. that would be a crazy get. I'm sure that they could get a huge payday for yeah. uh, signing up well, for those two movies well, based it's like, on their uh, track record. Well, it's like the Game of Thrones duo, uh, Benioff and Wise. I would never hire them. Yeah. Again. They've been fired from too many things, right? Like as a duo. <laughs> Um, Phil Lord and Chris Miller uh, always come to people, you know, they're a duo that come to mind. I mean, maybe this could be like a bit of the apology for the solo movie, you know, uh-huh. we'll give you two Avengers movies. I could, I they don't need to them. apologize to them, but I, I think, <laughs> you know, they're like, Hey, your, your, your methods didn't work for there. Have you matured since then? Come work with us on this big movie kind of deal. Right. Like, um, there are duos out there. I, th- I think that there, there's an opportunity to do this and, it's going to be, you know, huge to pick oh, up. One thing that I forgot to say, I watched at the top of the show is I watched that um, Peacock film. Please don't destroy uh, the treasure of foggy mountain. I think is what it was called, uh-huh. which is the the comedic trio that does the uh, digital shorts for SNL. Um, all the shorts they do are hilarious. The movie is very, very wild. It's really hard to describe. Uh, the humor, uh-huh. but it is really crazy. Uh, if you were going for quantity, maybe three people. Yeah, can't well, the, yeah, the, they absolutely should not direct the, these two movies. But it's okay. yeah, 
Yeah, so I, I think, you know, again, people are like, oh, people are leaving Marvel. Like, you know, the, the, King, the, the King movie's in trouble. I don't think, again, back to the point, Daniel Destin Crichton leaving to work folks on his sequel and Wonder Man series is is trouble at all. It's just, you know, you if you're like, yeah, we're going to hire you eventually. Uh, we just don't know when. He would probably be like, is there, can I go work on my other stuff instead? Like, I'd like to finish that and, and do that. Because I, I would love, a, you know, a Shang-Chi sequel well before we get to... Uh, Two, two Avengers movies, wouldn't you? Like, I think that one needs a follow up pretty soon because that was, that was such a, a phenomenon in, in and of the moment. There's so. a lot of a uh, lot of things built up in those cosmic rings. Yeah. Oh, and, and they're going to be in the uh, what if uh, thing coming up too. So, um, yeah. Any anything else to add with it? I, I think changing the title perfectly fine. I don't care. Uh, they've changed the titles a billion times. Didn't tell us in game until like what three months before the movie came out. Um, was the name of an Avengers movie? It's fine. Uh, but um, I, I think nailing down a, a, a director set, and, and I don't know who the there's writers come and go. They, obviously, teams of writers write these movies at this point. Um, getting that kind of nailed down would be important. So, mm-hmm. uh, but speaking of Wonder Man, Wonder Man, uh, the, the the show uh, is uh, now part of the Marvel Studios Spotlight banner. We talked about Echo being one of those. And uh, again, Marvel Studios Spotlight banners are shows that were probably greenlit well before everything else and will not connect as intricately to the MCU at large. So, uh, again, Echo is not going to affect Infinity War, right? Um, she, it's just not, that's not how it's going to work. Um, Wonder Man, probably going to be the same way. Uh, we know it's got um, ben, is it ben Kingsley uh, coming back as Trevor Slattery. Uh, the guy who plays Black Mana, Abdul Mateen Yah the th- third, I think second or third. Um, it's Wonder Man. It's more to be a um, insight parody uh, commentary on the acting, uh, making movies as it is. So mm-hmm. I don't need to see Wonder Man in an Avengers movie uh, to make, to make myself feel whole. So uh, I think spotlight yeah, banners I mean, are cool things. I mean, if we're not going to get one shots, this will be fine feels like a just a weird asterisk of just like you don't have to watch this unless people really really like it and then we'll do more with it yeah right <laughs> like if uh wonder man ends up being so good you know that it's nominated for emmys that they knocked it out of the park and it's the best superhero thing that yeah. ever has landed on streaming they will absolutely remove yeah. any sort of like spotlight banner thing to it yeah. and they'll put them in secret wars yeah. they'll put them at the front of the pack you know with everybody else so but that right. probably won't happen but. but as long as they don't write a story that makes you have to like oh you need like again a lot of people complain like you have to watch captain marvel wandavision and the Mar- uh, miss marvel to understand the marvels well you, i don't feel like you're gonna have to watch a lot to go into wonder man probably right so mm-hmm. um or watch wonder man to understand where miss marvel is in two years so uh, I'm okay with this. We'll see how it goes. Echo's our first foray into this. We already know that that's that was a hot spot during all the production issues a couple of years ago. So we'll see if maybe this one can come out the other side better for that. And lastly, Daredevil Born Again, the show that uh, kind of kicked off all these news, rumors, theories, and stuff like that. Uh, the previous version, before it was scrapped, uh, not scrapped completely, but mostly reworked, uh, would have had Bucky Barnes, the Winter Soldier cameo in there. And... Yeah. Uh, no. I haven't really. It's been a minute since I've thought about Bucky. <laughs> yeah, they don't know if it was supposed to be like, hey, he's on trial for like his war crimes as the Winter Soldier. I'm like, not everyone needs to be on trial for their crimes 50 years ago in this this thing. So please don't do that. But it's unclear if that's the plan still going forward. He could still be in here. Maybe I don't, we don't know. So he's very ground level. I think I know he's been in Avengers movies. He's very powerful, but like he yeah. still doesn't really have any other big abilities. At the end I mean, the honest, that's like a cool duo, a team up that I haven't really thought about. Right. I would yeah. say the power, the power skills and levels are very even mm-hmm. in a sense of like the type of adversaries that they could come up against. Um, yeah. Just give me, um, give me some, Give me some better Bucky Barnes stories yeah. compared to the last thing that I had to watch. Well, yeah, he he came in. I mean, he he had a uh, really good build up through the three movies. And they just don't know what to do with him. I'm like, well, then just retire him, right? Like, that's that, that's fine. You don't need to keep going. Sebastian Stan's a great person. But maybe make it. I know, I know he's coming up in Thunderbolts. But I'm like, maybe let him use his powers. Let him be the badass he was before. He doesn't need to be, like, tortured with, you know, his past crimes all the time. 
Um, mm-hmm. But um, I agree. No hallway is safe if, if Daredevil <laughs> and, and Winter Soldier are coming at you. They'll... Winter Soldier will punch through any drywall in the hallway. That's right. And uh, Daredevil will do a backflip. On. Concrete blocks all bound, man. They'll take you out. <laughs> But uh, that's the episode for this week, Mike. It was pretty good, but I, I I enjoyed this one. This was a good good bit of bit of notes, bit of news here. But if people want to know what you're up to, what you're doing, where can they get you at, buddy? Yeah, they can find my web comic at liferewardsrisk.com. Chris, if people want to catch up with you, maybe see what you're eating on Turkey Day. Oh my gosh, I I'm gonna, I'm just gonna drop it out there. Happy Thanksgiving, to everyone beforehand. But I am making my own uh, air fry turkey again. A little three oh, pounder. You can, you can fit a turkey in an air fryer? I've got I've got the one that looks like an oven. It's like a square one with uh, rotisserie oh, spit in it. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. So uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna put a three. I, I got it in the freezer. It's gonna come out in the fridge tomorrow and thaw out. I've got my brine ready, Mike. We I'm surprised we didn't talk about food at the beginning of the show, but we'll <laughs> we'll cover that next week. But uh, yeah, you can find me on Instagram Valdan eighty seven V A L D A N. Or video game systems of the the same name. Uh, some people have added me on there. Thank you. I will we'll, we'll play games sometimes if we're on uh, the same game. But if people want to know more about the show, where they can get all their stuff, come back in a couple of weeks for Aquaman. I think is coming out um, <laughs> reviews and uh, you know every week where we listen. Where can they get all them goodies at? Oh, I get to do the ending of the podcast with an audience my wife is in the room with me oh my gosh <laughs> well, laying out laying on the bed i think she's uh waiting for me to wrap up boy that sounds show. really suggestive let's uh let's get you wrapped up here so <laughs> no as always please visit superhero slate.com is the best place to find everything that we do here at superhero slate uh to get our awesome show notes so if you want to see the trailers that we talked about head on over to superhero slate Dot com. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, wherever else you love to listen to fine podcasts like ours. We got merch at SuperheroSlate.com slash store. We love our fans of the show. Please reach out. Let us know what you think about the trailers that we'll be talking about. Are you excited for What If Season 2? Uh, let us know. And we love our super fans. So if you want to be a super fan of the show, um, babe, what are they supposed to do? Do you know what they're supposed to do if they want to be a super fan? Do you listen to the end of our podcast every week? Subscribe. Comment, like, subscribe. Okay, that's what my wife. Says. Well, that's like, pretty. I mean, we, we do that, but yeah, she's close. No, just for this week. If you do that, you can be a super fan. Yeah, just this week. Yeah, it's it's, it's our Thanksgiving special. It's our Black Friday <laughs> deal. There it is. Our Black Friday deal for all super fans. Yeah, I so. mean, honestly, she just gave you more work. I usually just say just share the show with a friend or share the show with a buddy. But now I know you got to like, comment, and subscribe. Do all of those things right now and i don't know how you comment on a podcast if you're listening like on spotify so good luck leave but... us a review then yeah, you can yeah. leave your comment <laughs> review you can do it right in the your, your podcast or app of choice but uh awesome well uh mike anything else uh other than that have a happy thanksgiving uh, yeah enjoy your turkey day everybody that's right we will see you guys next week